after we discovered a new particle called a vault, we learned that one of the vault proteins had already been found in a particle thought to be the key to aging. Could vaults be related to the fountain of youth? Are vaults midichlorians? Use the vault, nuke. Hi, I'm Lenny Rome, the vault guy. I'm a cell biologist and a nanotechnologist. My passion is a common particle of the human cell. Yes, it's called a vault. In previous videos, I showed you that vaults are one of the most abundant particles of the human body. There are thousands of vaults in every one of your cells. And since the average adult has about 30 trillion cells, that means that each of us has more than a quadrillion vaults. That's one followed by 15 zeros. This is the eighth video in a series that my daughter-in-law Tara and I are making to describe the scientific journey to figure out what vaults are doing in cells. The last video was a quick primer on genes and gene cloning, and I told you about our efforts to identify the major structural protein of the vault, a protein we called MVP. If you haven't seen it or the other videos, I'll put links below. Today, I want to cover three things. First, I want to do a quick review of the vault particle, its structure, and major components. Second, I'll describe the identification and naming of the second largest of the vault proteins. And third, I'll tell you about how we discovered that the largest vault protein had already been found and named by another group who are working on a particle that is widely thought to be the key to aging. Here is an electron micrograph of vaults and an early model of vault structure that reminded us of barrels. Since you watched episode 5, you know that this is an SDS page gel showing the relative sizes and abundance of the three vault proteins and the vault RNA. I labeled the two large vault proteins by their sizes, 240 and 193 kd. Based on the intensity of the bands, these two proteins appeared to be equal in their abundance in the particle. The 100 kd protein represented 70% of the mass of the vault, and we called this protein the major vault protein, MVP for short. After we cloned the MVP gene, we discovered that the MVP protein was unique. It was not related to any other known protein in the cell. We had reasons to believe that MVP was responsible for giving vaults their structure. So we wanted to identify the other vault proteins with the hope that they could give us some insight into vault function. Our goal was to figure out what vaults were doing for a living. I'm not trying to train you as molecular biologists, so I'll spare you the minute details of how we cloned and identified the two large vault proteins. Just enough to help you understand what we found. Val went looking for the gene for the 193KD vault protein by setting up a fishing expedition to use the MVP as bait to try to catch proteins that bind to MVP. The three vault proteins in the vault RNA had come together to form the vault particle, so obviously they bound or were attracted to each other. The method that Val used, called yeast two hybrid screening, requires some fancy genetics. When I tried to explain it to non-science friends, it immediately caused them to fall asleep, so I won't go into it here. You know, perhaps I'll make a sleep video. Val was able to fish out a very interesting hit. It was a piece of the gene that encoded the 193KD protein. When she isolated a full-length DNA, she could show that it was indeed the gene for the 193KD protein. Better yet, she discovered that part of the gene sequence showed strong similarity to a previously known protein called PARP. This was a very exciting lead. The 193KD vault protein 
was a relative of PARP, and PARP was an important enzyme. Here's what PARP does. When DNA is damaged, PARP goes to the damaged DNA and recruits repair proteins that fix the damage. Val showed that the 193 KD vault protein was a new member of the PARP family of enzymes. Unfortunately, it was not able to repair DNA. And at that time, there were only a few members of the PARP family that had been identified. We decided to name the protein VPARP for vault PARP. You know, even today, we have no clue why this enzyme is inside a vault. However, VPARP turns out to be very important for engineering the vault particle. So that'll be featured prominently in a future episode. Let's move on to the 240KD vault protein, which Val also cloned. When Val identified the gene sequence for the 240KD protein, she searched the DNA databases for a related protein, and we got quite a surprise. The search revealed that the 240KD protein had an amino acid sequence that matched with a newly identified human protein that had just weeks earlier been deposited in a database. The protein had been named by the group that discovered the gene. They called it TEP1 for telomerase associated protein 1. Well, like vaults, telomerase is a ribonucleoprotein particle, an RNP. While vaults are very abundant in the cytoplasm of most cells, thousands per cell, telomerase is a very low abundance complex, primarily composed of an enzyme and an RNA template. Telomerase is incredibly important. Here's how it works. During aging, the ends of your chromosomes, called telomeres, they get shorter. This loss of the caps could be a problem, except telomerase can add a DNA repeat sequence to the caps, the telomeres. The TEP1 work was published by a group led by Lee Harrington at the Amgen Institute at the University of Toronto. Here's a picture of Lee. She currently chairs the Department of Biochemistry at the University of Toronto. Lee was collaborating with a group at the large biotech company Amgen, headed up at the time by Murray Robinson. Murray is currently the CEO of a pharmaceutical startup company in Boston. This is what Murray looked like when we started working together. Since Amgen was just up the 101 freeway north of LA in Thousand Oaks, California, I decided to give Murray a call and ask him if Valerie and I could meet with him and show him some interesting data. Murray was intrigued, so Valerie and I drove up from UCLA to Amgen. We showed him Val's data, and Murray agreed that we had identified the same protein that he and Lee had identified in telomerase. So, now we had names for all three vault proteins. Our meeting led to a very productive collaboration between our lab, Lee's group at the Amgen Institute, and Murray's group at Amgen. The collaboration, which was led by Val, showed that the TEP1 protein was located in both the cell nucleus where it was part of the telomerase complex and found in the cytoplasm where it was free and bound to vaults. You know, they also knocked out the TEP1 gene in a mouse. And guess what? The mouse without a TEP1 protein was just fine. Interesting, but another setback in our quest to figure out what the vault particle was doing for a living. The mouse with no TEP1 still produced vault particles, but these vault particles were missing both the TEP1 protein and the vault RNA, thus establishing TEP1 as a vault RNA binding protein important for stabilizing the vault RNA and recruiting it into the vault particle. Isn't that fascinating? I'm Lenny Rome, the vault guy. Join me in my next video where I show you how we used the TEP1 knockout mouse 
to determine the location of the TEP1 protein in the vault. I think you'll be blown away by the simplicity of the vault structure. Finally, do me a favor. If you find these videos interesting or useful and you'd like to see more of the vault story, subscribe and give us a like.